What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right. All right. So recently, former NBA player, NBA champion, I think it's three-time NBA champion, Mario Ellie, sat down with content creator Willie D. Uh, we saw a clip from an interview earlier when they were talking about Charles Barkley. We all know Willie D just can't stand Charles Barkley. But anyway... Um, <clears throat> Mario Ellie started talking about his experiences battling against MJ, and then the conversation uh, got toward or moved toward him taking a shot at LeBron James. All right, saying that you know he doesn't respect LeBron, and many players in the younger generation, especially LeBron's generation former super teams to win, saying, this is what he said, quote, I was just excited to play against Jordan, mostly because it's competition. That's what you're in the league for. And he goes on to say, I need to try and stop this dude. We had success in Houston against him. That was the cool part about it, beating him a couple of times. A super talented player, this guy was so good. Our team, none of us back down from him. We love competing against him. That's what you're in the NBA for. All these guys want to join each other and play with each other. No, I want to beat you. LeBron, you say you're the GOAT. Why are you joining Bosch and D-Wade? We weren't doing that in the 90s. Like Dream caught Jordan up saying, you want to link up? No, I want to beat you. I don't want to join you. These boys want it easy right now. It's the AAU era. LeBron wants Anthony Davidson. You're talking about how you're the GOAT. Come on, man. Great player. Love him. But everybody wants to play buddy ball instead of just having elite competition. Well, <clears throat> I don't think he's lying. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's lying about what he's saying. Uh, this is and this has been up until recently the super team era and to me this lebron's era should have an asterisk by it just like how people put an asterisk by the steroid era because weren't those players supposedly doing something to make the game easier for them right now you can't now you can say no it's not illegal for players to team up one another but you know uh it it should be if you're talking about basketball from a team standpoint, if you're talking about since basketball is a team sport and we're talking about winning rather than individual performance, then yeah, it should be an asterisk by it because you're you're rigging the game. You, you, you're asking a player in his prime to come team up with you. So that you can beat another guy who you can't seem to beat with a regular status quo good team. You need super pieces. And then the, the icing on the cake is for if the insult to injury is, it would be even more tolerable if a certain guy had the decency to use his considerable power and influence to at least give other people credit. So you want these people to come join you. That's the only time they get any love is when the, <clears throat> the player agrees to come join you. Then when the actual performings and the actual games occur, and then when this guy gets certain love, start getting love, then it's a pushback against this dude because they want this guy to get on. <clears throat> they only want one guy to get all the praise, and it shouldn't work like that. I know some people saying, well, what about, you know, <clears throat> the Rockets team with Akeem Drexler and Barkley, or later on, Akeem Drexler and Pippen? And my pushback to that is they didn't collude with one another. They weren't on the phone talking to each other 
hey, do you guys want to join up? And secondly, they were older. Now, look, these guys, they <clears throat> are arguably even older than they were. But these guys, you know, saying they age differently. Those players were broken down. By the time Barkley, Olajuwon, and Drexler teamed up, that was 1996. Drexler only had two more years in the NBA, and after his injury in 92, Drexler was never the same player. After 1996, Elijah Warren began a slow decline. So he peaked in 94, 95, maybe 96. And after that, it, it was a discernible decline in, in, in um, Akeem Elijah Warren's play. He started having issues with tendonitis. Then some of you might remember, I think starting in 98, 99, he started having a respiratory illness he was dealing with. <clears throat> he wasn't the same guy. He went from being a guy averaging 27, 11, and three or four blocks to being a guy averaging 23 and nine, two blocks to 16 and seven. I mean, he just deteriorated. Barkley wasn't the same after really that MVP year. He, he still was a, a great player for a couple more years. We started having more and more back issues. And then if you notice, it took about a year for teams to catch on that Barkley wasn't the same guy. Remember, Barkley would get the ball, and uh, sometimes Barkley would get the ball like three feet outside the paint, and then back at it, back, back into the back, back in the dribble, back into the basket, back, 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 back. And then a double team comes, and he kick it to uh, uh, to Coutinho Mobley, or kick it to Michael Dickinson, or kick it to Brent Price. But then it took these dudes a while. I said, "Wait a minute, man, this guy ain't the same Charles Barkley." He's not dominating on the nights when he was getting single coverage. Instead of this dude getting 30 and 15, he was getting 18 and 9. Like, okay, so we don't got to double team this motherfucker no more. But anyway, Barkley wasn't the same dude really after 94. And by 97, he clearly was not the same player. And then people also got to remember about Charles Barkley. It wasn't necessarily like he was pulling a, a, a diva power move when he left the, the uh, Phoenix Suns, people got to remember Kevin Johnson had vowed to retire by age 30. I think he retired in 97. So Phoenix was in a, uh, was in a, a rebuilding mode after 95, really, because in 96, they won 41 games. Dan Marley left from free agency in 95. Danny Ainge retired in 95. Uh, for the most part, Tom Chambers retired. He had a brief comeback in 97, which didn't amount to much. They were in a rebuilding process. So Barkley, not being done yet and was trying to pursue a championship winning situation, looked out there in the stratosphere, still wanted to stay in the Western Conference, and chose the Rockets, who people got to remember got swept out of the playoffs in the first round by the Seattle Sonics. So it was looked upon like, okay, they were still a contender, but they weren't the same team they were just the year before when they won the second of, of two ch championships. So you got people got to look at things as they were instead of just looking at things as the narrative goes. The fact remains, yeah, players were hooking up with each other, but it still wasn't the same. Even with Scottie Pippen. Pippen wasn't the same, dude. Pippen only averaged like, what, 14 points a game with the Rockets? Pippen wasn't the same, dude. This wasn't the same Scottie Pippen that was a top five MVP, MVP candidate just three years earlier. The fact that Michael Jordan won a championship with that Scottie Pippen the year before is a miracle. A miracle. The only dude that I saw in that era that I thought was on that super team-ish was Shaquille O'Neal. Because I think Shaquille arguably played with more talent than even LeBron James. And still, he got swept in the playoffs six times. But yeah, 
I understand completely what Mario is talking about. And it was pressure on guys to do that. Remember, Kevin Durant was one of the most vocal opponents and critics of when LeBron went to South Beach. He said, well, hey, what happened to all of us wanting to go out there and compete? And then it's funny, the first rip, the first inklings of the media were the ones that was putting pressure on him to go and win a title, almost as punishment, to the point where he went out and, and signed with the Warriors, won two titles, right? And then remember when it was known that LeBron was going to the West to make it easier for LeBron, then they put pressure on KD to leave. Oh, KD needs to go to the East. KD needs to go to New York and try to win on his own. He needs to go back to home to D.C., go join the Bullets or the Wizards and have them win. Remember, it was so much pressure that he had to prove that he could win on his own, right? Now, why is that still not an issue anymore? Why is it when he went to the Nets, all of a sudden now, that's not an issue no more. He got to win. They just wanted his ass to buy the West. So, yes, I'll never see that dude as the GOAT. Never. Because he always had to have something in an easier fashion. Funny, this camera crew's been following this guy around for years, hoping that he can have some last dance fairy tale ending, which has been failing. So they choose the Olympics, purposely lead guy, guys off the team that can play well with him rather than have the NBA's best out there, which is how it's supposed to be, the ultimate in the narcissism. And now they're crediting this, almost crediting the Olympic medal to this guy. Oh, well, him getting his third Olympic medal, that puts him ahead of Mike. Well, what about KD? He got four. They're not even focused on any of these other people. Steph Curry just got his first Olympic medal. That's a great story. Do anybody really know that? No, because they keep focused on this one guy. So salute to Mario Ellie. I think he's 100% correct. And people talking about some old, he's an old role player and all this. He's just jealous. Ain't nobody jealous that dude, man. Not, I mean, y'all crazy, bro. Like, anytime you criticize this dude, here come his legion of bootlegs. Unbelievable, man. Everybody, So everybody that criticized LeBron James, they motivated by jealousy. So what about the people who are LeBron James fans that keep criticizing Michael Jordan? Are they jealous of him? Michael Jordan doesn't even respond to this stuff. Michael Jordan doesn't even inject himself into this stuff. But you keep seeing people always bringing this dude up. He stay on their minds, man. Damn the stalkers. 